Hello there, everyone watching this video. I just saw the fucking penis. <laughs> Hello there, everyone watching the video here today on the DT channel. It's been a while, I know. I haven't I don't post that often here. I'm gonna try to post more often now, uh, starting with this video. Now, this video is basically me going over off the cuff, uh, no real script. A few, I, I kind of know what I want to say, but uh, going over my six days to Christmas one shot. You can go watch it on. My other channel, uh, put a link in the description, and I'll, maybe I'll even do one of those little things that come on, on the side of the video, on the right side of the video, I don't know, we'll see. But, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the making of this, and about how I go, how I, uh, go towards one-shots, I guess, how, how I see one-shots and how I build them, is really what this can be going over. Now, no, nothing on here is worth anything, it's just a bunch of silliness uh, that we had. Which, of course, is fine, because uh, it was just a little funny one-shot. I mean, even the character art I did for all the guys is just, <laughs> just ridiculous. Terrifying, too. Look at him. <laughs> uh, but I did character art pretty much for everything here. Uh, for all the monsters, except for this one up here, but we'll get to him eventually. We have Krampus, we have the giant snowman. Oh, well, let's get to those guys. First off... Mm, I, you don't have to draw the art for your thing, for your one-shots. Uh, you can find them online, or you can find maps online, or you can even just get a pre-packaged one and uh, change it the ways you like. I only did the art for mine here because I was streaming it, and I just didn't feel right using other people's art for this. I don't know, it just didn't feel right to me uh, when I was doing my own one-shot and kind of retextualizing what they wanted from the maps they drew and the art they made. Uh, even if they did put it out there, you know, like for free for anyone to use commercial or otherwise. I, it just felt weird to me to do that on a stream, so I made my own. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so this is just the... I pretty much just drew this so I can give a little of context, have them in the helicopter. And <laughs> I just thought it was funny having the very serious scene here of the snowman and the <laughs> fucking elf just coming out there. <laughs> it was all most of the... Decisions you'll find I did because I thought they were funny <laughs> Which is the kind of one shot I was going for here if you're not going for a, you know a funny vibe in your one shot Obviously don't you don't have to do this type of shit uh, But this is also to give context for them being in a helicopter which was going to crash and actually funny enough uh, You can actually hear this uh, in the in the video I played the crash sound effect uh, but while I was playing the crash sound effect, they were talking about how they were going to um, jump out of the helicopter. Now, my original plan was just to have them all roll Constitution uh, saving throw, and if they got above like a 15 or something, they would have woken up. And if they, uh, after the helicopter crashed, and if they'd gone lower than that, they would have taken them a minute, or someone would have had to wake them up. That was my original plan. I wasn't planning for them to take any damage or anything, just, you know, get, have a chance of being caught by these elves. But they instantly started talking about uh, getting out of the helicopter. Now, I could have stopped them there because they didn't have to waste their spell slots. However, my friend Andy, uh, the guy playing Daddy the Elf, um, I could tell from the way he was talking and the, and the spell he was using, Featherfall, that he, even before he said the word Featherfall, I can just tell by the way he was talking that he had a plan and he wanted to show off a little bit. Which is, of course, fine. You know, everyone needs their time in the spotlight. So I was very comfortable letting them have that. And it really didn't make a difference to the story at all. Or, I, I wouldn't say story, just the flow of the session at all. It just gave him a little bit mo of a moment to shine, which he usually has a hard time doing. So I was really, I was okay of doing that. Uh, so him and Frosty got out that way. Charles Garland, on the other hand, uh, got out a very different way. He basically, let me pull up his character sheet here. He basically was using the Banishment Arrow. Uh, I don't know what he changed the name to. Get out of my space law, I think. Where it banishes someone to a uh, different... Ba basically, it does the Banish of the spell. It banishes them to, uh, I think, a Demiplane. For, like, a... Uh, in the Feywild. It banishes them to the Feywild for, like, a turn. Um... And he was trying to use that on himself, and I didn't actually check if he can use it on himself. He used it to try and banish your target. I guess if your target is yourself, yes, that could work. However, 
Uh, he, I don't think he took away... Yeah, he wasn't taking away Arcane, arcane Shots at all. Yeah, I don't think he took it away an Arcane Shot with that when he had three of them in total uh, at this level. Which I could have made him do, but it was kind of a small moment. And initially, I didn't even want this to be like a big thing. So I was, I didn't, I didn't make him take away an arcane shot from that, and just because I didn't see any real point in it, I could have done it. I could have been more rules, rule, royally, uh, rules, rules, rule, rules, lawyery. There you go about it. But I just didn't really see a need to, and he just, just he got the shine a little bit too. He had a bit of fun from it, and honestly, at twelfth level, you're actually only supposed to have two arcane shots. But I thought that's not a lot, and you're only going to use this character once, so I'm, I gave him an extra one. Uh, and didn't tell him that. <laughs> so, sorry. Sorry for betraying your trust there, Max. <laughs> but no, they got away. Um, they got they went invisible, so they avoided this encounter. That's something they did get a, did a quite a few times. Uh, get more on that later. Um, of course, that was fine. I kind of had a half of mind that they were going to try and avoid this encounter. And then they went to the fortress. Uh, and they fought a bunch of dudes here. There was two dudes here with reindeer, and there was another guy that came out. They were trying to stealth fight them, but it didn't quite work out, and they did get a surprise round on them, but I think they were trying to avoid them entirely, which didn't work out at all. Um, but funnily enough, over here, this is some water coming out of here in a little river fashion. If they would have gone and checked this out, they would have found doo -doo -doo -doo, a sewer entrance that they could have come in from uh, sneak sneakily, and maybe if they wanted to stealth their way throughout this entire thing here. So that was an option. Uh, that they did not see, and I, that's fine, I wasn't going to make, you know, I was going to point it out if that's not something they were going to do. But that's just, uh, basically the reason I bring it up here, is because I think it's important in one shot, especially since it's a one-time thing, to give the characters options on how to deal with a situation, give the players options on how to deal with a situation. They could have come out here and they could have fought the elves like they ended up doing, um, uh, or they could have tried to sneak past here or back here, or they could have done a lot of different things. They kind of couldn't tried to go invisible. Hell, they could have tried to climb the entire fortress if they wanted to. You know, there's a lot of options they could have gone with. Um, and the one that they ended up with is with the elves fighting them, uh, the reindeer trying to get everyone else's attention in, which would have obviously made the fight a lot bigger because uh, there's a lot of dudes in here. Uh, but actually, there was also less dudes in here originally. There was, I don't think this guy was here. Uh, I, I just put an extra guy or two in there because they didn't end up fighting them. or So I just wanted to make it seem a little bit more intimidating. That's another thing. Um, if it doesn't really matter, go ahead and just rake up the tension a little bit. If I, I knew they weren't going to fight those guys, so I just made it seem like if they did end up fighting them, it would have been a disaster. I just, you know, I just you know, rake up the tension a little bit. It didn't matter at that point. I knew their plan was going to work. There was no way the elves were going to see through it. So... It was just it just made the made it a little bit more fun for them, I think, uh, to see their plan work, and not have to go through a grueling encounter like that. But anyway, uh, reindeer tried to get their intention and didn't work. Oh well, that's how the dice fall. You have to go over it sometimes. I would preferred it if they had to fight the elves in there. They didn't end up having to. That's just how the dice work. It's not that big of a deal. And it probably would have made the entire session a little bit more grueling. Uh, but it didn't end up being that way, so whatever. They did do a little bit of a smart thing where they used, uh, they made s snowmen, animated snowmen with the anime object spell, and then they, <laughs> and then they put the bodies of the guys inside the snowmen to both hide their bodies and make it so if anyone opened up the snowmen or fought them and killed them, there would be emotionally scarred by finding their dead friends inside the snowman. It was fucked up. It was a fucked up plan um, that they came up with with the help of the chat uh, from the stream. And it was great. <laughs> it's great. I don't know, rules-wise, if you are able to build a snowman then animate it with animate object. I don't see a reason not to, though so I, I didn't really care. You know, I just let it happen. And it was, it was pretty cool. And they used that as a way to get inside. Charles hid inside of Frosty the Snowman's body. And because he had the helmet and everything on, he was able to, which is the... Which was a little bit of an unintentional um, synergy they had there, which is, of course, fun. And 
I didn't want to ruin that all for them, so I didn't, you know, I didn't go that hard on the first floor here. Now, I did make it especially difficult on the second floor, because uh, you see we had the snowman here, uh, the giant snowman, who was statted. As you can see, he has stats. He's a pretty beefy guy. They could have killed him, but he would have done a little bit of damage to them. I think he has, yeah, he has three attacks. He can make a snow wall, and everywhere he, everywhere around him is basically take cold damage if you're just near the guy. Uh, so it's a pretty deadly encounter. Uh, not dead. It's not deadly, but it's a, it would it would have taken gone rid of a good amount of their resources if they did up fighting them, which is why I made this a bit of a harder obstacle for them to get past. I wasn't against them getting past him. The entire reason I put these tables here is so they wanted to stealth past him. They could have. That's the entire reason these table things are here in the first place. But with the plan they had, and with him, Frosty the Snowman, I made Frosty the Snowman a, a known character, which I think, I don't know if Jack appreciated that or not, but I thought it was a little bit of cool world building, I guess, for this stupid one-shot world. But, yeah, of course, I made it a little bit more difficult. They wanted him, they wanted to have Frosty... Uh, they wanted, he had, so the big snowman asked Frosty to take off his hat to prove that he wasn't the actual Frosty the snowman, because he, the actual Frosty the snowman, uh, stops living when his hat is taken off. Um, which, of course, Jack was, so they were like, oh fuck. So, uh, Max, as, Max as Charles inside of him, wanted to move his body around and talk in Frosty's voice. I wasn't really on board with the last part, because I, couldn't see Charles doing Frosty's voice, voice convincingly. So I was kind of going to say that that plan wouldn't work regardless until uh, Andy came in with the, I think it was the minor illusion spell, something presentation or something like that, that made a voice uh, come through the come through uh, Frosty the Snowman, which he could make sound like Frosty the Snowman. So once Andy had suggested that, I was pretty much like, okay, this plan's gonna work. Uh, I just had them roll in case they really fucked up. But no, the plan worked. It was fine. They were able to get past the snowman. They felt really cool. Letting them avoid uh, both this encounter, the first encounter of the elves at the helicopter, and the encounter from the first floor, did kind of make them uh, a bit over-resourced for the final battle against Krampus. I'll go over up there now. Which did make the fight a little bit less climatic than it could have been. But that's just how it works. There were a few ways I could have made it a little bit more climactic. Climactic. I could have had the elves from downstairs come upstairs. I could have had uh, this thing here because Krampus had the spell. What was it? Conjure Faye, so that's why the Yeath Hound is here. I was in a bringing a Yeath Hound. But, uh, the problem with that was, as soon as I actually started seeing them fight, especially that first fight with the elves, like at the entrance way, uh, at the entrance way up here, I realized that if I either brought elves up here, or that this guy be summoned, because this guy had a good amount of health, it would have taken like all, like all three of them hitting this guy to actually kill him. I mean, hitting him for a full round to actually kill him. And he had a pretty nasty damage. And basically, this guy probably would have just been attacking uh, Daddy, Andy's character. Which would have made someone else have to go help him. And were making anyone who just fought Krampus by themselves pretty much defenseless and probably die. So I could have seen that. I saw that situation easily leading to a TPK if I had brought in a summon or let the elves come up from downstairs. I thought that that would have very, very easily become a TPK, which is, of course, not something I, I originally intentioned. I didn't know how good their characters were going to be until the session started, so I couldn't balance the Yeath Hound around it at all. So I decided, instead of bringing the Yeath Hound and possibly having a TPK, which isn't a bad thing in a one-shot, don't, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with all of the characters failing in a one-shot. Uh, that's not the vibe I was going for here. It was a fun one-shot. The only way I really wanted Campus Krampus to be able to win is if they sided with him, which was something I was trying to uh, actually get to happen. I was kind of having Krampus go out on trying to make them join him, which didn't work because their characters were insane. <laughs> so it didn't work at all. 
Um, so after that, I knew that Krampus plan basically wouldn't work because I didn't want him to actually TPK them. I didn't want them to fail. I didn't want Krampus to win unless they sided with him, basically deciding that he won. Because that wasn't really the vibe I was going for. Like I said, this is a fun session. This was a Christmas one shot. It was supposed to be just some fun, uh, goofy Christmasness with them. And that's what we ended up doing. I had the tower fall apart at the end just to give them one last thing to uh, go up against. Uh, they fell off the side of Featherfall. Uh, uh, Mr. Lizard Man now letting them use Featherfall on him, which I guess is a little bit of funny uh, <laughs> character growth. Not really character growth, just bonding or trust being built, which is I think is a little bit fun um, to have at the end there. A little bit of sweetness. Uh, so that's basically what happened. The snowman appeared. He ran off <laughs> to find Santa after they told him Santa was still alive. <laughs> and it was uh, it was a good amount of fun. Good amount of fun. In the end, uh, there wasn't really as it wasn't really as grueling as I wanted to be. But I didn't really want this boss to be extra grueling. I wanted this boss to be just the last obstacle, and for the scheme, kind of deadly. Which it didn't really seem because their resources weren't drained at, drained at all. But I that's what the original intention was. It didn't happen. It's whatever. You know, that it's fine. At the end in the end of the day, I think everyone had fun, and that was the entire point of the thing. So what uh I think that's all. So um now I guess one thing, look at this art that uh Dave drew. He's people <laughs> watching the stream. It was great. <laughs> he drew it while the stream was happening. <laughs> Um, but what did we learn from this, I guess? Uh, what are my philosophies on one-shots? And I guess a little bit on adventure design in general. Is one, think about the tone of the adventure that you want. And make sure everything aligns with that tone. All of my art for this is pretty silly. If a little bit spooky at times, which is the kind of vibe I was going for, a silly but spooky a little bit vibe, which the spookies being Krampus, of course, which he obviously should be. Um, but very much a spooky vibe, I mean, look at that reindeer. <laughs> and look at all of their art. So it's very much a silly vibe that I was going for. I was going for a little silly, jolly vibe, and that's what I aimed for, and that's what I did with pretty much everything in this session. I was I, I kind of, kind of alright made art. The silly vibe to it, and kind of half-ashed, uh, crass kind of look with all the lines kind of facing into each other. Nothing that serious. That was what I wanted with the session, and that's what everything in the session was designed around. Uh, and that's a very important thing: that make sure all, all a assets and facets of your adventure, of your one shot, are designed around the same goal or theme. Or, or both, really. You want them all to be designed uh, as a whole. It seems as a whole piece is... I can't think of the word I'm looking for. All lines. All lines together. I, I can't remember the actual word, but that's the best word I can use. It all lines to make one cohesive, cohesive piece of, 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 of an adventure that just works together. That's the big thing. So keep your theme, your vibe, your goal in mind throughout the entire process, the entire process, so that nothing is misaligned, everything's cohesive. And then with that as well, just remember to have fun, make it a fun adventure. You can have it be grueling, but make sure it's also fun. Make sure there's options as well for the players. You want the players to feel smart, basically. Uh, adventure that's designed around making the players feel dumb it's not going to be a fun, fun adventure because no one's going to have a gun, fun, good time because they feel dumb. Uh, so I recommend never design an adventure with the intent of making your players feel dumb. That just sounds like a dumb idea, honestly. So never design an adventure in that, in that facet of way. Always design an adventure to have your goal in mind, have your vibe in mind, but to keep it fun, to keep it player-centric, and to make the players feel smart. Because I added a little option into the game that would made would have made them feel smart, but when they came up with their own completely new idea, which you need to plan for always for you for the players to come up with something you haven't planned for, <laughs> that's the best way to design anything uh, in any game design is design around the players 
thinking of something that you didn't design or didn't think of. That's the best way to design something. And that's always what you want to keep in mind. It makes the players feel smart and makes them have more fun if they came up with the idea, even if they just think they came up with the idea, which is not the case here. They pretty much came up with every idea that happened, which is great. And just keep that in mind and it'll make them it'll make them have a good time. And if you're willing to accept that and not let it ruin your time, that they've kind of bypassed a lot of stuff that you made, if you just accept that as a reality, accept that that's going to happen and that's part of the game, you'll also find that you'll have a better time just going along with their funny little uh, shit posts is sometimes the best word to describe it. Uh, shit posts. And once you've done that, you're pretty much going to have a good time regardless of what content you have, really. If, if you can just keep all those facets in line, keep uh, everything you make in line with your goal, and remember to keep it player-centric and fun, it doesn't matter what you're doing, your players and you're probably going to have a good time. So that's pretty much all I have as terms of advice. No real technical advice in this. I mean, I could give you advice about making monsters and all that stuff. It really doesn't really matter. Uh, when I first did D&D, I didn't really have stats like this at all. I mean, I made all these stats, of course. Uh, but when I first played, I didn't have I didn't have the experience to make stats like this, so I didn't. I just came up with their stuff on the fly. And some DMs still do that. They just come up with the basic stats, their health, their AC, their movement. Um, sometimes not even their movement. And they, or sometimes not even their AC, and they just go off of what they think they should be able to do. Now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't encourage that for bigger bosses, uh, but in a one shot, if you don't, if you just don't have the experience, that kind of design is fine as long as your players also uh, understand that you're new to the game and don't harass you for not having sunstone stats. As long as you keep. Uh, everything in mind of what you want to do and keeping it in mind that the player's fun can become your fun if you just let go of some of the things that you thought needed to happen when they really didn't need to you're gonna have a good time no matter what stats you have no matter what the art is no matter what if you, no matter if you have music no matter if it's just you talking to your friends in a theater of mind uh, you can't have a good time. That's because that's how I started. No music, no art, no nothing, just no stats, just them having character sheets, things that I came up with on the fly, go and going along with what they did, and just that ending in a good time for everyone. So that's really the advice, like that's the best advice I could ever give you, is to just have fun, let go of whatever it is that you think your game needs and just uh have a good time so i'm, I'm kind of rambling now i'll end the video because i don't really have anything else to say but yeah there we go let me know if you want me to do more stuff like this and future one shots i might do i definitely want to do more because this was a lot of fun to do honestly this one shot and now that i have like a good actual format for it i really want to do more uh, we'll see what happens with that though uh, that'll be all for this video guys and see you in the next one